These are our extraordinary times. 30 seconds and counting. And we face an extraordinary challenge. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. I believe that this nation should commit itself. Tower cleared. 10. Ignition sequence start. 9. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. 5. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 4. Because that gold will serve to organize and measure the best Three. of our energies and skills. Two. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One. One we are unwilling to postpone. Zero. And one we intend to win. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And by 2025, we expect new spacecraft designed for long journeys to allow us to begin the first ever crewed missions beyond the moon into deep space. We will partner with industry, we will invest in cutting-edge research and technology. We will set far-reaching milestones and provide the resources to reach those milestones. Step by step, we will push the boundaries, not only of where we can go, but what we can do. Roger, gear lock, clear here, all. Mark, sign up, please, for me and uh, Private organizations are starting to do more to look at privatization of space or taking on the role of actually being able to deliver people to what were government facilities. Uh, so you're going to see more and more interaction with smaller organizations looking at how they can contribute, not only from a scientific point of view, but also interacting in space. Well, SpaceX was founded with the express purpose of advancing the cause of human spaceflight. And SpaceX became the first private company to send a spacecraft into Earth orbit and bring it home. So that's going to be a big step forward. It'll be the first time a private company has done that. We're really on the cusp of this golden age of space flight. So I want to see the day come where it's a, a affordable so that anybody who wants to go and see the Earth from space can buy a ticket and go. And not just to low Earth orbit, we want to go to Mars. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Okay, so the production model will go up to 350,000 feet. Um, that's pretty high. That's, uh, you'll be able to see about eight to 900 mile radius. So you'll see the thin blue mantle of, of, of space, just like the astronauts talked about. You'll look back and, and you'll see the oceans and, and the browns and the greens, and black above you. Uh, it's going to be truly life changing. We're talking about opening up whole new areas of research of uh, what's going on in the atmosphere between 50,000 and 150,000 feet, which we know very little about. We can collect that data every day, four times a day in a vehicle like this. We all want to know where did we come from? And this is what space is all about, the passion, beauty, and joy of space exploration. And the second question, everybody asks him or herself, are we alone? Are we the only living things in the universe? Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got spacecraft's goods, so we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse. Humans are going to go into space and be part of the universe, uh, and I'm not kidding, that you'll get this perspective of the Earth from way above, and I believe that changes you, it gives you reverence for our place in space.